Hello, everyone. Today, we're taking a journey back in time, to an era when mustaches were more than just a hipster trend, and cocaine was, well, let's just say it was a bit more popular. We're diving into the mind of Sigmund Freud, the father of psychoanalysis, and his relationship with cocaine. Freud? Cocaine? You'd think this video was about a night out. Well, hold on to your seats, because today we are exploring Freud's secret passion, not for his mom, but for cocaine. Before we dive in, it's important to be mindful of potential historical biases, and acknowledge the complexity of Freud's relationship with cocaine, in the context of his time. The late 19th century was a time of rapid scientific discovery, but also a time when regulations on drugs were, let's say, a bit lax. Cocaine wasn't just available, it was marketed as a cure-all miracle drug. So when Freud started his experiments with cocaine, he was swimming with the tide, not against it. As we explore this topic, we'll frame the discussion of cocaine use as a cautionary tale and avoid any glorification or romanticization of drug use. Freud's fascination with cocaine led him to write a groundbreaking paper titled Uber Coca. In this paper, he described the potential benefits of cocaine, which he believed could be used to treat a variety of conditions, including depression and anxiety. You know, Freud focusing on a white powdery substance instead of the human psyche definitely feels like the missing ingredient from a wild Netflix special. Freud's first reference to cocaine was in a letter to his fiancée, Martha Bernays, where he wrote, I have been reading about cocaine, the essential constituent of coca leaves which some Indian tribes chew to enable them to resist privations and hardships. A German has been employing it with soldiers, and has in fact reported that it increases their energy and capacity to endure. I am procuring some myself, and will try it with cases of heart disease, and also of nervous exhaustion, particularly in the miserable condition after the withdrawal of morphium. Perhaps others are working at it, perhaps nothing will come of it. But I shall certainly try it, and you know that when one perseveres, sooner or later one succeeds. Now that's like saying, I heard this new thing called veganism is great. I'm going to try it out, maybe even at the next family barbecue. Freud, my man, you were nothing if not bold. But Freud didn't stop at self-experimentation. Oh no, he was a generous man. He shared his newfound miracle drug with his friends, and even his fiancée, Martha Bernays. Now, I don't know about you, but if I'm trying to impress my future spouse, I'd probably stick to flowers or chocolates. But Freud, he was like, forget roses, darling. Have some cocaine. Talk about being high on love. Man, Freud and those 19th century doctors must have had one heck of a pharmaceutical rave going on back then, huh? Got a toothache. Take some cocaine. But as we know now, this miracle drug had a dark side. Freud's relationship with cocaine wasn't just a passing phase. It was a significant part of his life and work. Some even argue that his experiences with the drug influenced his theories. For instance, his concept of the unconscious mind could have been inspired by the altered states of consciousness induced by cocaine. But that's a topic for another video. As time went on, the negative effects of cocaine became more apparent. Freud's friend, Ernst Fleischl, became severely addicted to the drug, and Freud himself experienced bouts of depression and other health issues. Despite these struggles, Freud continued to defend the use of cocaine, even as the medical community began to recognize its dangers. Eventually, Freud did stop using cocaine, but not before it had left a significant mark on his life and work. His relationship with the drug is a stark reminder of the dangers of unchecked scientific enthusiasm and the potential for harm when we don't fully understand the substances we're dealing with. If Freud was alive today, he would most likely tell us that sometimes it takes a while for people to realize that something isn't all it's cracked up to be. Sigmund Freud, the father of psychoanalysis, and his complicated relationship with cocaine. It's a fascinating, if somewhat troubling, part of his story. But it's also a reminder of the importance of critical thinking and skepticism in science. After all, even the greatest minds can fall prey to false beliefs. Well, folks, we've reached the end of our journey today. If you found yourself intrigued, learned something new, or just enjoyed the ride, don't forget to hit that like button, share this video with your friends, and subscribe to my channel for more captivating psychology-related tales from history. And let's not forget the wise words of Freud himself. 
one day, in retrospect, the years of struggle will strike you as the most beautiful. So, until our next adventure, stay critical, stay curious, and above all, remember to enjoy the journey of discovery.